Hi, and uh, welcome to this installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. If you have not seen this show before, my name is Art Bergeron. My day job is as an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell down the street, also in Westboro off of Route 9. But this is not about elder law. This is about my friends Frank and Mary. If you've seen my presentations, which are now actually monthly being, being done through the kindness of Westboro Cable, you've seen some of my seminars, you know that my friends Frank and Mary have a very simple goal. They want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. And so if that's in Westboro, that means they want to stay right here. They don't want to move to Marlboro. They want to move with their kids in San Diego. They want to be right here. So the point of the show is to tell them about the people they need to know and the programs they need to know about in order to stay right here. Um, my wonderful co-host is Shelby Marshall, whom, you know, some people know me, everybody knows Shelby, who's now been a selectman now for almost three years, hard to believe. We've been doing these shows for like two, two something years, a long time, right? We've got a great guest. Usually she finds all the guests, although I confess I know this person and we're going to we're going to that's going to come up, I think, during this show. We're going to talk to her for about 15 minutes and then Shelby and I are going to talk a little bit about Shelby wants to kind of do, do a kind of a short briefing regarding kind of where we are on COVID and related issues, which is really important right now. So Shelby Marshall, thank you very much for uh, for doing this. And uh, and whom do we have today? Yeah, Arthur, always great to see you. Welcome to our guests. So glad for those that are tuning in to us. Um, I hear through the grapevine that our audience is growing, Arthur. So we're doing good things by bringing content that people enjoy and uh, are finding interesting. And I know that because now folks are coming to me with, hey, I've got an idea for your show. So love oh. it and, and, and really appreciate that. So very excited today to welcome our guest, Regina Wolf-Fritz. Uh, she's the owner of a Better Day um, uh, Adult Day uh, program. She's going to tell us all about it. But Arthur, you and Regina uh, know each other. So I'm going to do a little role reversal and turn it back to you. Okay. And so very briefly, right, um, Regina, I met because she was on staff with Tammy Pazaricki when Sammy, Tammy Pazaricki had created Pleasantries, which was this unique um, program. And then when, when Tammy decided that she needed to do other things, she wanted to be doing other things, Regina decided to buy it, right, or to buy it. It is, a, it is now a nonprofit. And full disclosure, I'm on the board. I think this work is extremely important. What she does has helped many of my clients, has helped my brother-in-law, my sister's husband, who was there to live a better life, you know, than they could have been living when they were at home, right? And so I just wanted Regina to come on to talk about this. You know, you and I shall be know because our day jobs, we're both involved in this and with folks with memory care. This program, you can't find a comparable program in t for 20 miles, for 30 miles in this area. It is unique. So Regina, can you just kind of tell us about the program? Tell us about what's, go what's going on. Um, I'd like to have more of your background, except, you know, we agreed that we could, you know, you, you've got a day job, we've got 15 minutes. So I'd like you to kind of focus on what the program is, who who you deal with, um, and what you're doing, because you're open. One of the things that you did is you managed to stay open through this whole thing, which is pretty astonishing. Regina. All right. Thank you, Arthur. Thank you, Shelby, for having me. Yes, my name is Regina, and I'm uh, the executive director at Better Day, formerly Pleasantries. And uh, we are a home in Marlboro. We're in a residential neighborhood right next to the Fort Meadow Reservoir. And we welcome guests every day into our home. Usually up to 15 guests with um, COVID-19. We have presently, we have six guests with us at any time. And what we do is literally our name describes it well. We're trying to have the best day we can have. Better day, we come together. And uh, so right now I have a group in the living room, in the sunroom, they're actually in the sunroom. We have a beautiful sunroom overlooking the reservoir and um, they've just actually talked about Martin Luther King Jr. Day and um, talked about their dreams um, but in general Arthur to give give you out there an overview we are open Monday to Friday from 8 30 to 4 30 we serve food right here on the premises we cook everything ourselves Shelby you probably remember lunch yes we love to have people over for lunch no. <laughs> and we cannot wait for the times that we can well I'll be back I'll be back once COVID is over to be yeah, asked. Please, it's, uh, we love to do this. So, but we come together right now up to six and we spend the day together 
doing what we like to do. So we really, we are small enough, we can adjust to our likes, our dis dislikes. We usually okay. start the morning with a leisurely breakfast. So everybody just walks in and we warm up slowly, chat about uh, events of the day, events of the week. Um, and then after that, we usually move over. We, we do our morning exercise. We exercise every day. And after that, the rest of the day, I would say we, we try to find a good rhythm. It's all about a good rhythm of being out there loud and crazy and really calming down again and, and resting. So we, we mix up physically and mentally challenging activities that uh, we find match or uh, fit our, our guests and, and honestly, our staff. Because I always say like, happy staff, happy, happy, happy guests. And uh, so there's a lot of laughing. I hear them right now. And, uh, and besides that, so in, in normal times, we are, we are out and about. We are members of Tower Hill Botanic Garden. So we love to go to the to the Botanic Garden. We have Girl Scouts come in. We have high school students in the afternoons join us for extra one-on-one -on -one time, for games, for walks. We are a very outdoorsy oriented group. I myself have a background in horticulture and uh, yeah. have worked on the Native, at the Native Community Organic Farm for 15 years. So love to be outdoors. And honestly, last year this came in very handy because COVID-19, we literally pulled 90% of our programming outdoors onto our deck, the garden, and to the shore, the lake shore. So we, uh, we garden, we have a daily walking group that pulls through most of the winter unless, you know, unless the streets are not, the, the ground is not passable. But so we are very active um, group. We have a good mix, I think. We, our age range is from 60 to 102. And uh, we're good mix, um, men, women, so. And I think, Regina, one of the things that, you know, recently we were talking about this and you talked about the fact that you do have this mix. And so that for some folks, from some folks really are, are going to be walking with you. But for, some, for folks who just can't, who can't manage that physically or no, or, you know, or mentally, you know, that there's there is an alternative. Can you just kind of talk about how how that works? You know, could you could you get people together for some particular things, but then even for this, it's really remarkable, even for this relatively small program, very individualized program that you can really kind of provide that individualized attention to someone or care to someone. Yes, I, I, I always find it amazing. In the mornings, we're kind of all hanging out together. And then, you know, we have our lunch. And after lunch, I would say like, we split up. There are some people who love to help clean up in the kitchen. There's another group that loves to kick up their, their legs and rest a little. And then there's the other group that really goes out usually after lunch for a walk. And we can do that because we're so small. We have um, always two care partners right now, two care partners on and myself, so we can, we can split up. And the program is, we are designed, and honestly, I have big dreams for the future, is really for independence, that people can move and mill around. I have one... I found one lovely guest. She loves to sit with me in the office. And I just had to say, <laughs> can't do it right now. But so I have, I have guests come in here. They move through the sunrooms, through the craft room. We have a quiet corner. And uh, I have big dreams for the outdoors to have it all fenced in, beautifully landscaped. And then we also open the outdoors because we always have some guests that find calm in the outdoors. We have one guest, she loves to sit under our dogwood and uh, having, pushing our limits even further out that it's not the front door, but really our, we can use the whole outdoor space, will open up completely new kind of programming, which is very individualized and, um, and freeing. So Shelby, you know, we so we once again we both deal with folks, you know, mm -hmm. who are at home who have some memory issues or who are taking care of some folks at home with memory issues, you know. And I just find so often I'm just confronting folks don't want to leave because because you don't want to embarrass your spouse, you know, because your spouse got some issues. And so you and so what are you doing? You're staying at home all the time. And then the you know, the care partner who's got memory issues is is just watching TV, you know. And the other partner is just getting bored and, and, you know, and it's just all bad, you know, and I, I, I've often, I've told this story that um, one day I was talking 
to my sister. This was several years ago. She has a, a, her husband who died, oh, maybe like a year and a half ago. But before then had been had had memory issues, had been at home. Actually, she was able to keep him at home because they just and they're very, very close, you know, and for several years before that with with memory problems. Fortunately, they had seven kids. They had six girls. So there's girls around that were helping. Them, but it, but a, a great addition to this was that for a, a period of, I think, a couple of years, uh, he went to this program. And I still remember my sister saying one of her favorite stories was she one night she picked him up, you know, because it, it was it's a whole day program. Right. So so she it, it, or at least, you know, it, for many people, it's a whole day program. And she picked him up at the end of the day. She said, so how was your day? She said, oh, he, I had the best day. Well, what did you do? I have no idea. It was great. <laughs> but it, it gets to the essence of this. Right. It's like it's not about what remembering what you did. Right. It's about how you feel. It's about how you feel. And for and, and, and that becomes so striking as you develop memory problems, because so many of us have our whole lives built upon our our ability to remember things or our ability to anticipate things, you know. But is that really what a human being is? Is that really what makes you happy? You know, and so I, I and I so I was so um, impressed when I saw that Regina, you know, got, you know, ended up doing this program because it just seemed like like Tammy was just like a perfect fit for this program right just wonderful it's just wonderful and it's a little like Arthur I love how uh, one of our board members and also daughter of one of our guests always puts it um, when she says like oh it's just uh, first of all she said like when she was looking for a day program she was looking for something where she could imagine herself be you know when when we get older and she's like, yeah, I can, I can see myself there. And also it's like, for her, it's like dropping her off at Aunt Susie's or it's just like at a friend's house. And it's this comfort. I think um, that's the key thing to the success is just creating a comfort level because that's when we are all at our best, when we feel comfortable and are not stressed about performing. And that's really what we, uh, I think, try to remove that everybody is so comfortable. Um, yeah. And is it okay? Absolutely. I mean, I, I know that um, there are many, um, many families that, to Arthur's point, you know, they find themselves being very isolated. And, you know, I've seen over the years so many um, caregivers become isolated with their loved one who they are caring for. And what I, you know, to Arthur's point, what I love about this program is it gives both individuals independence. And it reinforces that in such a holistic and healthy way. Um, I, um, uh, you know, I saw on your website that um, you have programs folks can attend from two days to five days. The hours, there's some level of flexibility. So it really is intended to meet everyone's sort of schedule need. And I'd even say, you know, budget to, to a great extent. Um, I am curious to understand um, kind of, um, maybe an example of how you've adjusted, um, you know, cause you used to go out on field trips and travel. So I know COVID has really crimped everyone's style to that respect. Um, can you give an example of how you've adapted to that, you know, for our viewers? Yeah, so the first adaptation we did was the uh, complete restructuring of, from an eight hour program. We first moved it to a four hour program in order to accommodate everybody because, you know, we had 17 guests and I couldn't have them all at the same time. So we offered, we started, went back with half days. Um, and now we, we moved slowly. We now have two full days and the other three days are half days with two very separate, completely separate cohorts. Okay. So that if one group it gets should get infected, the other one would be safe. Sure. Uh, we have adjusted, and like you said, like all the lot of the fun things got cut. Uh, we've never been as much outdoors during the whole summer as we've been. We've sat every day at the beach, and it's been wonderful. Furthermore, we have um, we've gardened, we go on walks, and our hair partners are just great. You know, they are very creative. And uh, we have started, I mean, we, we collected, for example, we collected seeds, we collected cone pods, we collected things that we paint, we got, we got into different crafts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we just did more that the outdoors 
yeah. offered so much for us. Um, and then well, we to, the day was also so much shorter, to tell you sure. the truth, the day was shorter. Well, so it's over before we blink. <laughs> and, I, and I think I think there's a there's sort of this natural tendency as folks get older and we're caring for them, we bring them inside. Yeah. And one of the beautiful things I think about COVID for all of us, regardless of age, is that we really come to appreciate the beauty, the peace, the tranquility, the rejuvenation that the outside brings to us. And so it's wonderful to hear that you have really embraced that for your guests. And, um, you know, uh, I know how that makes me feel when I get out and get that fresh air. And I think regardless of, you know, where one is in their, their memory journey, it's, um, it, 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 it's good for the soul. So, um, uh, it's great to hear. I know, um, uh, I think it's important that we put your um, website up. So we'll make sure that that's um, part of the sort of ticker tape um, that our friend Aiden will help um, put up on the screen. So folks can contact you and we'll also have a phone number there. Are you still taking new um, guests at this point? Yes, we are. We are because, you know, there's always movement. There's always some guests mm -hmm. moving on. And so, yes, we do. We always welcome um, people to call, check in with me. And we try to accommodate as much as we can. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Arthur, this time I have to thank you for an amazing guest. An amazing guest. Regina is just an amazing, but this is a great program. Once again, it's for people in a particular stage of their life. But if you're Frank and Mary and you want a way to stay home and this is an issue, go talk to these people. You won't Absolutely. believe it. It's just the most wonderful thing, you know, just go talk to them. Yeah. Okay? And have that. Yeah. Have the conversation. The conversation is free. I always say that have that start first yeah. conversation. Cause that's sometimes the hardest part to understand right. the resources that are out there. Right. So thank you so much, Regina. Thank you. And, for having um, me. <laughs> thank you. And we'll be uh, right back um, because Regina has got to go back to her day, day job, but stay tuned. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Bye. Welcome back, and I hope you enjoyed meeting Regina Wolf Fritz. If you've got a family, you know a family in that situation, you got to talk to these people. So, Shelby, what is new in Westboro? Let's kind of talk about you know every 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 day. It seems the the, the rules are changing, the expectation is changing around COVID. Can you just kind of talk about what's going on and what to expect? And once again, for folks who watch this show regularly. We've re agreed that this is going to be part of our regular every every show. We're going to talk about what's what's going on because it keeps changing, right? It it does, and Arthur, I think it's important that folks have accurate uh, current information, and because you know, God knows social media and the you know the the neighbor told me that's not the best way to gather your information. It, it right. it's helpful, but it's not the best way. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, share a screen. Okay, so what I want to do here is we want to talk about the vaccine and I want to direct folks to the best source because the information about vaccines is changing just uh, yesterday. The CDC um, and it was sort of late yesterday and into today said, hey, we're going to we want everyone over 65 to get vaccinated. So um, let's talk about that. So first of all, I want to drive everyone here to mass.gov. This is the place where you want to get your information right over here. On the right hand side is the COVID-19 tab. You just click on that. And then there's lots of information here. But again, today we're just going to talk about the vaccine. And it look right here, COVID-19 vaccine. Okay. And it brings up this information. And look right here, right? The questions every everyone is asking, when can I get the vaccine? So what I love about this website is it really is very easy to follow, starting with pictures. I love pictures, right? So here's here's where we're at. Okay. So right now we're in phase one. That's over here. And when you think about phase one, it's really all about healthcare workers doing direct care. Um, and so those are your first responders, police, EMTs, uh, folks in, in uh, any sort of healthcare setting. Um, a dentist's office are now being uh, included. Um, uh, certainly long-term care facilities where, um, uh, again, the, the staff um, um, are, are being uh, included in those as well as the residents. Um, and, um, 
home-based healthcare workers, and you know, basically everyone involved in direct care. That's sort of where we're at right now. Phase two, Arthur, you and I were talking about earlier today, is really, it feels like it's going to be the bulk of everyone else. But before we get there, let's just kind of go down here a little bit and just look at, I just want to quickly show folks why this website is so important, because it really starts to spell things out. So we're here, sort of the second week in January, and you can start to see just visually where the different groups are that are getting vaccinated. So this may or may not include Frank or Mary or their friends or their loved ones, but Frank and Mary's friends and loved ones could very much be here as part of long-term care facilities or congregate care uh, settings. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna reinforce and we'll make sure that this is on the ticker tape that if you want information, mass.gov forward slash COVID vaccine. It will skip through those first couple of screens that I showed you, um, but that is the resource that you wanna to go to. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen, but that that's where we're at right now. So we're looking probably at a month and a half, um, probably before uh, Frank and Mary are going to get the vaccine. And, and it's a moving target. I mean, just yesterday, the governor and lieutenant governor were in Worcester at the Worcester Senior Center. And, um, you know, the governor said that while they're getting all of these, we just heard that Gillette, right, is going to be, Gillette Stadium is going to be a place for vaccines. I heard that Fenway Park is going to be a place. Obviously, that doesn't maybe help our friends here in Westboro. But um, all of these uh, facilities are, are being brought up to be ready for vaccines. But the state, according to the governor, doesn't even sort of know five days out when the next supply of vaccines are coming in. So it's a very fluid situation at this point. Is that your understanding as well? Wow. You know, I'm, no, I'm, I'm learning all this stuff from you. And, and, okay. and, I, and, I, am, and I am understanding because on, it, it, I was just mentioning to you, we just had on in my, on my North Bro show, we had the, the, uh, the, public health, the, the public health woman there who was really just terrific. And we were just talking about all of this, right? And she was talking about the strategy there. And then last week I did the show in Nantucket and every community has got kind of a different strategy. So in Nantucket, it's like this small, you know, it's like 13,000 people, you know, mm -hmm. there's one hospital, there's one of everything, you know, it's like one. And so they've actually set up a website where if you're a senior, you're just going to sign up to that website. You're just going to tell them, you're going to sign up, you're going to say, here's who I am. I'm over 75 or I've got these comorbidities or whatever. And then they're literally going to outreach to you okay. and tell you when to come in and yeah. say, so this is, you know, that we've got the vaccine now and here's how it's going to work. And, but in other communities, of course, in larger communities where multiple sites are going to be available for va vaccines, it's all different, you know? Yeah. So, so, so getting, I think you're, what you were, you started off with the most important piece about this is it's all about, it's going to be driven by the town. It's going to be driven yeah. by the town. And, and yeah, and I and so as it relates specifically to Westboro, um, I have had uh, conversations with um, our uh, town leadership um, about that that next level of communication to residents. So it answers the question. But when can I get my vaccination here in Westboro? Is the board of are we going to kind of is it going to be like the old days of like polio vaccines where you go and you know you're like standing in line or whatever to get your shots? So. All of that information is coming, but we're not there yet. And so I want to reassure the public that those conversations are absolutely taking place between our public safety teams and our public health team. Um, um, but uh, we're, we're just a few steps and stages sort of behind that. Um, on Monday and Tuesday of this week, um, uh, Patrick Parcell, our fire chief, um, and his team um, led a clinic of first responders at the Doubletree Hotel to vaccinate healthcare workers from like five or six different towns. And so, if you will, that was almost like a trial run. You might imagine if if we get the call here in Westboro and there's an opportunity, I, I can assure you that our our um, town staff will engage in the opportunity to deliver those vaccines. But we here in Westboro are so uniquely placed. We're, you know, we've got Worcester right up the street. We've got an abundance of healthcare facilities. We've got Reliant. We've got, you know, a number of different um, uh, options where um, uh, vaccines may be delivered even before they get to the municipal level. So again, a fluid situation, but I want to just ensure folks, mass.gov, 
forward slash COVID vaccine. And if you have questions, call your healthcare provider. They're probably going to tell you the same thing, but certainly they are uh, one of the first folks you want to call. And we're going to do everything we can. And Frank and Mary are going to do everything they can to try to keep you informed about all of this. And as I mentioned, we, you know, we're going to, we're going to have this as a regular feature. Right. We've talked to Cable, and I know that you know Shelby even talking to Cable about even you, there may be even some other things, whether it's you know P, you know public service announcements or other things, especially to give seniors this opportunity because here you have the most vulnerable population that's also the least technologically into it. You know, in terms of the screens and all the stuff. So. The, the the outreach to the seniors, I know it's just going to be a tremendous challenge, tremendous community challenge. You know, it's, it's, it's a real community thing. It really tests places like Westboro where there is this really tremendous sense of community, which is real. That's real special. That's Absolutely. real special. Absolutely. So, um, so Shelby, before, before we go, I just want to make sure that, you know, every at the end of every show, we try to cover anything. You put your selectman hat on. We should You should get like a kind of a goofy hat that you can wear. <laughs> It has like this town. Oh, I shouldn't say that it has the town seal. That's a whole other issue. Oh, this, please. That has, you know, when you're, when you're being the selectman. So, so is there anything special that folks should be kind of tuning into over the next week? Um, yeah, a absolutely. So, I want to, uh, I'm going to go back and do a quick screen share. Hopefully, do that successfully. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So, our friends at Westboro Connects, they've been on a couple times, they are hosting the third annual Martin Luther King Jr. Junior Community Celebration. That is on Monday from 11 to 1230. Um, Jamel Her uh, Adams, excuse me, um, is a um, nationally known um, poet and he will be uh, speaking at this event. Um, if you are interested in attending, it's free, but you do need to register. You want to go to westboroconnects.org forward slash programs. Uh, it is a uh, um, it's going to be a great uh, show um, and uh, or show excuse me program and um, I think it will be um, come at a very uh, appropriate time um, for healing and sort of peaceful conversation and thought <laughs> and uh, we we could all use more of that. Um, and I also want to let folks know that um, the Westboro Democratic Committee is um, giving back to the community and helping in that process on Martin Luther King Day, uh, 10 to 4, uh, a, a food drive for the Westboro Food Pantry. So uh, many of you know Kate Donahue. She lives at 17 Gary Circle. You can uh, bring your uh, donations to the Westboro Food Pantry to her house from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., um, and uh, do something good um, on a day in which uh, we remember someone who um, uh, led with courage and leadership and love and passion. That's a wonderful way to end the show. So thank you so much, Shelby, for that. Um, folks, I hope you, you know, we hope you enjoy these shows and that you find them informative. Uh, once again, we'll continue to try to make Frank and Mary to have Frank and May help you in any way we can, in any way we can. So if you've got suggestions, by the way, you should call Shelby if you've got suggestions for other shows and and, and especially during this time or, or, for other th or for other things that the cable station can be doing because they're totally devoted to keeping you connected and keeping you safe. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much, Shelby, as usual. We'll see you next week and folks, we'll see all of you next week uh, if you want to watch uh, for the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Westboro. Thank you very much. Thank you.